Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna be going over the new phase five badge items. There's a lot of really good ones. So I'll be starting with the best ones and going from the best to the worst. Um, so yeah, a lot of really good items. They're pretty expensive when it comes to the badge prices. So you can see the prices here. Um, the weapons are gonna be 150 for the two handers and ranged weapons. The main hand weapons or the weapons you can use in either hand are gonna be 105 badges. The offhand weapons are 45, so you can see if you buy a set, uh, a main hand offhand or a one hand offhand, it's the same as the two handers, so it's 150 for a set of weapons. Uh, for chest and legs, it's 100 badges each. For belt, gloves, and boots, it's 75 each. And then for rings, it is 60 badges each. So these are expensive in terms of the amount of badges they cost, but they are very, very good items. So uh, let's get started. So these are the items. There's only three items that you're typically gonna see in a BIS list. The rest of these items you're not going to see in a Sunwell best in slot list. So these are items that are going to be even better than Sunwell gear in the right situation. So this chest is a threat chest that can be used by a protection paladin. It's obviously plate. Um, because of the spell hit, it's really good for single target threat and also it has high spell power. So this is a great threat chest for a prop paladin and it is best in slot in uh, some pretty popular uh, paladin bis lists. Uh, so great chest there. Uh, the boots, uh, basically the exact same thing. Um, great for a threat set, specifically single target threat for a prop paladin. Um, yeah, really good. Uh, the next item to mention is the ring of the style warp protector. This is best in slot for uh, you know, multiple tanks. Uh, it is the best in slot mitigation ring for warriors and bears, uh, maybe even paladins too. I'm not so sure about their, uh, which ring they want for if they're taking Brutalis. Uh, but for bears and warriors, this is best in slot. Warriors use this on Brutalis. Bears can use this in a lot of situations where they want an armor ring and they can afford to use one that doesn't have any defense or resilience. So, um, yeah, really good ring and definitely an item you'll be using all of Sunwell as a tank. At the very least, you'll use it in Brutalis set. Next, we have items that are better than tier six best in slot. So what this means is that with the badge vendor coming out, and so as of the time of recording on a lot of mega servers, badge vendor just came out with all these new items. So some of you are gonna be able to immediately buy these items and benefit uh, immediately uh, gain more damage than you would with uh, your previous tier six bis. So the first thing I'll mention is going to be the uh, the weapons, the fist weapons. These are actually best in slot for enhancement. Now it sounds like there might be some, um, depending on sims and how much haste your shaman has, uh, it, it, there can be some variance, but in the uh, in the shaman spreadsheet that they, they link to in the shaman discord that compares all their gear, um, they actually have the veneer fists coming ahead of the siphons. So the siphons were your, your phase uh, six, or tier six rather, uh, best in slot, your, your phase four bis weapons, and the veneer fists actually come out a little bit ahead. So depending on your exact configuration, it may vary, but especially if you don't have the current bis as an enhancement, uh, these fist weapons are gonna be a, a huge upgrade for, for enhancement shamans out there. Uh, then we have the Girdle of Fearless. This is a really strong belt for a prop warrior. Um, they want hit, expertise, defense, stamina. It's basically perfectly statted. Um, it's just really, really good. It is better overall than the belt they've been using from Gertog, but it is less survivability. So you'll still use that old belt on something like Brutalis, or if you really need a lot of tankiness, but this is gonna be an item that most prop warriors are gonna use at all times. Uh, then we have the Rushing Storm Kilt. This item is uh, really good for elemental shamans. Now this is individually best in slot. It is better than channeled elements for Ellie's in most situations, because they usually don't need the hit. So pretty much just abyss item in a slot that elemental shamans usually use an off piece anyway. Uh, they plan to use offset legs anyway. So for a lot of LE shamans, just a, an upgrade right away. Obviously not best in slot as there's new legs in Sunwell, but uh, yeah. Uh, then we have paladin legs. These are uh, a really high stamina option for a paladin. 
Um, they can use Lightbringer legs. They're, they're close, but generally the inscribed legs are going to be better in Sunwell because you really want survivability. You really want to be tanky. And with these inscribed legs, you can have um, more stamina, uh, significantly more stamina. You gain nine stamina and a socket. So if you socket stamina, that could be a gain of 24 stamina, which is pretty big for, for tanks. So um, a nice upgrade there for uh, Prop Paladin in terms of mitigation, uh, main, mainly health uh, rather than necessarily avoidance though. Then we have the Sun Guard leg plates. These are really good for Prop Warrior. Um, they are not a landslide better than the tier six tank legs, um, but they do offer you the option to have a higher health uh, health pool. So you gain stamina by using these. Expertise is going to be really good, especially if you're low on expertise. Um, but with the addition of the belt, you're, you're going to be gaining a lot of expertise uh, pretty quickly as a warrior. So best in slot for Prot Warrior going into Sunwell, better than the uh, the tier six legs generally. But uh, in some situations, uh, you could fall back on some of your other leg options, but but you're going to use these most of the time as a pro warrior. Next, we have the crossbow of relentless strikes. Uh, this item, uh, believe it or not, despite being a crossbow, is actually best for a rogue. It is um, best in slot for rogue going into Sunwell, and a lot of the ranged weapons are going to be pretty hard to get for them uh, because they are going to be. Uh, weapons that hunters are going to be using, whether it be Thoridal or the Golden Bow of Quelth Loss. So this is going to last you a while. Now it isn't a massive upgrade over the Steam Pistol, but especially if you don't have the Steam Pistol as a rogue, this is a nice upgrade, uh, even though it does cost 150 badges. So very expensive. Uh, also can be used by a hunter. Uh, I'll just mention it now. So it, it is not better than tier six bis for a hunter. This you know category is for rogue. Um, but warriors and hunters can use this bow as well. For warriors, it can be the best weapon for them going into Sunwell if they struggle with hit. And during Sunwell, if your uh, Fury Warrior or your Arms Warrior is ever struggling with hit, this is actually a really good hit option for a warrior and can be really good if they need hit. Um, however, going into Sunwell, a lot of times warriors don't have hit issues. Uh, in terms of a hunter, it's better than the Serpent Spine Bow from Vash. It just just hits harder, it sims better, um, and uh, yeah, especially if you use the hit. You can see based on the speed, um, your individual results may vary as a hunter because uh, even though it, it sims better, uh, you might you know have trouble with that 2.8 speed. So definitely not a must buy or anything if you have a serpent spine longbow already. This is more of just like a comparison of like it's it's around the level of serpent spine. Uh, and generally a little bit better. You can see based on stats, you basically get the 14 hit for free uh, over the previous stats of the longbow. So uh, a nice option there. Next, we have Staff of the Forest Lord. Uh, this is a bis going into Sunwell weapon for a, uh, a cat. Very clearly, really good for a cat. Now for a bear, obviously you've got to consider other options um, in terms of like armor avoidance from the tankier staffs, but generally going to be a great threat option for a bear as well. But definitely bis for a cat, even better than the Z, the ZA staff. Next, we have the items that are that are pretty much equal to tier six bis. In some situations, they may be slightly ahead, but they're overall very close. Uh, so these are items that are great catch up pieces if you're missing uh, a slot. Um, so we've got Angelista's Revenge. This is basically the same thing as Primal Wrath. Uh, Primal Wrath has more stamina, Angelista's Revenge has more agility. This one technically would give you slightly more damage because you're trading one agility uh, for the two stamina. So Angelista Revenge technically slightly better than Primal Wrath for damage dealers. Um, slippery Slippers of Dutiful Mending. These are actually uh, quite good. Uh, you lose stamina from the Boots of the Divine Light, but you gain uh, you gain healing, but then you lose a socket. So all things considered, when you trade out the stats, if you gem healing into Dutiful Mending, you're gonna lose uh, a little bit of healing, but you're going to gain spirit. So for something like a priest, this is actually very close to Divine Light. If you ended up not getting them, you could opt for Dutiful Mending. Uh, for something like a Druid, it'd be a little bit worse than Divine Light, uh, but still, still reasonable. 
Next, we have Clutch of Soothing Breeze. Um, now, you could argue maybe I should have put this in the uh, better than tier 6 bis category. Generally speaking, this is worse than belts in tier 6, but all of the good belts for shamans have, uh, have haste on them. So this is a good option for a fight like Brutalis, where you want more MP5, you want more sustain. So this is the best regen belt option for a fight like Brutalis. So I wanted to mention that here. Uh, very good item for a Resto Shaman for Brutalis. Next, we have the Hauberk of Whirling Fury. This is individually better than the tier six chest for an Elemental Shaman, but a lot of Elemental Shamans will need the chest for the set bonus. So uh, this is an item that you could potentially, again, categorize as better than tier six bis, but unlike the legs, it's a little harder to slot in for elementals. Definitely worth buying as an elemental though, if you can afford, uh, if you don't have tier six chest or if you can afford to move your set bonus uh, to four different pieces. But you definitely don't break the four piece or the two piece as elemental to use this. All right, then we get adorned supernal leg wraps. These are actually uh, very close to leggings of eternity for uh, a priest. And so as we're going through here, you're seeing that a lot of items that were kind of tricky to get, um, all of a sudden, we've got a badge item that is, you know, like on par. So as a priest, these are pretty much on par with Leggings of Eternity. Again, um, when it comes to healing stats, things can be subjective. But generally speaking, the reason these are close is because um, these have a ton of spirit. So for a priest, they're actually going to gain healing from that spirit. So you don't really end up losing any healing even though you're down a socket and down some healing because all that that spirit converts um and yeah you're basically trading mp5 and in a little bit of healing you, you do net a, li a little bit of lost healing because there are three sockets here you're not going to make up for for all of that but yeah generally a slightly better sustain option than eternity overall a pretty similar item for priest now for resto druid uh they have uh, they would prefer the Eternity a little bit more. Once again, Resto Druids don't like Spirit as much as Priests, especially if they're not innervating themselves every fight, and especially when they're not healing people that are in their group for tree form buff, um, which is pretty common. Okay, cool. So close to Eternity for Priests, a little bit behind for, for Druid. And I'll also mention that Druids have another leg just before, uh, before any Druids leave us here. There's a leather version of the leg that is like the same thing. Should probably just go with the leather version as it has uh, more stamina. But they were uh, very, very comparable overall. Um, very similar. Uh, this one, the Grove Warden. That's the boomy one, but we'll get to that. All right, last item that's like equivalent to tier six bis is the Trousers of Scryer's Retainer. Now it's important to mention, these are better than tier six for some classes. But those classes, a lot of times, are going to be using either an offset piece or they need their set bonus. So as an example, this Trousers Scryer Retainer are much better than the Hunter Tier Legs. It's not even really close. The Hunter Tier Legs are pretty bad because they have MP5 on them. Um, however, you'd, you'd need the legs to maintain your four set in a lot of cases as a Hunter. So uh, running the uh, four set is going to keep uh, this being a little bit better than Scryer's Retainer, but overall, individually, this is much, much better. Now, when it comes to other classes, uh, if you don't have something like a bow-stitched leg, or if you're a rogue and you don't have the tier leg, these are actually really good. So these are ab about equal to tier leg for a rogue. Uh, they are going to be significantly better than sh Enhancement Shaman tier, significantly better than the uh, a decent bit better than uh, even really um, honestly basically how the scryer's retainer works is you equip this item if you need the hit and you can drop your set bonuses and the really only exception is rogue rogue doesn't need to swap out of this if they have their tier because it's very close but yeah this item is insane um, you even could use it as a warrior i wouldn't recommend that i'd recommend going with unending fury instead um, but yeah would not be would not be better than the offset tier six legs for sure for a warrior. All right, uh, next we're going to go down to the items that are slightly worse than tier six bis. So these are items that are still still good, but they are not better than items that you can get in tier six content. Whereas in tier six content, you could have used something about equal to these items. Uh, so Fused Nethergon Band is really, uh, it's decent for a prop paladin. It is bis in some sets, 
but for most other casters, it is going to be, um, it's going to be a little bit mediocre because it's just really high hit. You don't always need this, but if you need a hit ring, it can be quite good still. Um, keep in mind that it would only potentially be bis in a set for a paladin, a prop paladin. You're never going to see it in a caster bis list. Um, but I could even have said, you know, potentially that this could be a bis item situationally for a pro as well. Uh, but again, it's kind of a single target threat ring for uh, for your prop pout in there. All right, then we have boots of incantations. Uh, these boots are okay. Uh, if your mage for some reason needs hit, usually your arcane mage doesn't need hit. But if your mage needs hit, they can be decent. Um, I'll be going faster through these items because they're not as good and a little simpler. Um, there's a lot of feral items. I'll try and look at uh, several of them here. The the gloves are slightly worse. Um, later on, there's going to be a chest. There's going to be a pair of legs. Basically, if you don't have tier six, there's a lot of nice tier options for a feral, but you'd never use them over tier six. So it, it, it's just behind tier six, but still really good. Um, so yeah, the hand wraps being one of the better pieces. Then we have Belt of the Silent Path. This item is similar to Belt of Deep Shadow. I feel like it's not going to be worth it for many classes to pick this up because you can just use Belt of Deep Shadow. So probably a waste of badges, um, especially because you can turn badges into gems and sell them and maybe even buy the Belt of Deep Shadow, which is going to be very similar anyway. So kind of a waste of badges, but um, if you have a bunch of badges, you don't have a lot of gold, maybe buy this. Um, the main problem is that depending on what you need, you can kind of just fix it with gems. If you need the exact amount of hit from Silent Path, you could just have one more hit gem somewhere else on your gear. You'd make up the difference in five hit. Um, you know, they're similar in agility, and this one gets an extra, an extra gem socket. So, pretty similar items. And then we have the Aftershock Waste Guard. This item is uh, a great item for an Ellie Shaman. It's just that the Flash Fire Girdle is really, really good. So if you don't have that, this is a nice item for Ellie. Uh, the Waste Guard of Reparation. This item is going to be uh, you know, reasonable for a Holy Paladin, but worse than the Asgalore Belt. Uh, Tormented Demon Soul Rope. This is not a... It, it's not really a great chest for a caster, but when you go looking through chests, there's not that many that don't have hit. So if you have way too much hit, you could use this as a caster. It's just gonna be a little hard to use this because a lot of casters have set bonuses that they're trying to maintain. And a lot of casters are using um, chests that have hit on them, like vestments. So if you can find a way to use a non-hit, non-set chest, this is kind of reasonable. Uh, mainly because there's no other options that fit that bill. Next, we have the chest plate of stoicism. Now, the reason I have it slightly worse than tier 6 bis is because if you have the tank chest, you pretty much would never use this item. Um, I guess maybe in some sort of block value set. But with that said, um, a lot of tank warriors do not have the tank chest. Most bis lists um, are going to tell warriors, at least in phase three and phase four, that they should turn in their tier token for a fury chest as a prot warrior and use it for threat. And a lot of bis lists set, uh, suggested using arena chest. So a lot of prot warriors do not have this chest. If your prot warrior doesn't have this chest, stoicism actually gonna be really big for brutalis. Uh, so make sure if you've got a prot warrior that he knows that this is in the game and a, a great option for brutalis if they don't already have the tier six tank chest. Next, we have Crystal Wind Leggings. These legs are uh, reasonable for Boomkin if they don't need the hit. Um, if you compare them side to side, you lose a socket, you lose crit, you, you know, lose, you gain two spell power, but you're gonna lose a bunch of gems. So, so it's got a lot of stats on it, so it's not that bad, but, um, yeah, if you have a leg option that's really far behind, it's kind of reasonable, but it's pretty much just always going to be worse than channeled elements. Next, we have the Grove Stalker leggings. These legs are uh, really nice for a uh, Resto Druid that's really far behind on gear, but Eternity are going to be better. Um, so, not not terrible, but not not this or anything. All right, Rune Scales once again similar to Sunhawk legs for a Resto Shaman. 
there's also another pair of legs from Black Temple that are very similar to Sunhawk. It's unlikely your Resto Shaman hasn't seen one of those leggings at this point, um, but all of those legs are better than tier six leg individually. So if you happen to not need the, second, or the, the set bonus, you could use any of those. Next, the leg blades of Unending Fury. Important to note that even though this is coming way later in the list, these are better than the retainer legs for a warrior. It's just that um, the re neither are bis for warrior. Both are behind Divine Retribution. So that's why it's lower. Scryer's retainer are better for other classes than warrior. So um, yeah, oh, if your warrior needs hit and they don't have Divine Retribution, it's something they could use. So Blade of Harbingers, uh, this is something that could be used by a hunter or a ret. It's gonna be really hard for like a warrior to use this because they're gonna have to drop sword spec so they'd lose a lot of damage as an arms warrior. But for a hunter or for a ret, it is not bad. Uh, pretty much no human ret is gonna want this because you just lose a lot of expertise. But uh, for non-humans, it is about the level of a Cataclysm Edge. So not as good as the torch from Black Temple, but if you don't have that and you don't have Cataclysm's Edge and you're not human, this could actually be pretty good. If you are human, this is even comparable to like the, the tier five weapons. So uh, if you're a human using something like the Kael'thas sword is gonna be pretty similar to Blade of Harbingers in terms of your, your output. But for hunters, um, it's usually gonna be worse than the double armor pen dagger if they have it. Um, they really would wanna run like a sim to check their current armor pen if they want it to be exact. But at a glance, it is not, not behind uh, the mojo daggers by much. And especially if you don't have both d daggers, these are actually gonna, this axe is gonna be really nice. And for the melee weaver enthusiasts out there, this would be pretty good for melee weaving too. All right, worse than tier six bis. So these are all items. Again, everything on this page is actually real realistically an upgrade for a really undergeared character. There's very few items that are horrible. With that said, none of these items are gonna jump out as being a good item to someone that is actively raiding, uh, unless they've gotten really unlucky. Probably the best of them is going to be the Gavel of the Naru Blessings. Uh, and maybe I should have even moved it up a tier. Um, so I will, I will make that correction, I guess, uh, on the spot fly now. This is probably, um, it's probably not fair to say it's just worse than tier six bis because it is pretty close to hammer and it is pretty close to dark blessing, even if it is pretty far behind the Illidan mace. Well, lots of people don't have it. So besides the mace, um, the rest of these items are going to be, uh, items that you're not really going to use if you're an active raider, but they're good catch up items if you've gotten really unlucky. Um, but yeah, the best of the items are definitely going to be the gavel or the scryer's blade of focus. Now again, for the Scryer's Blade of Focus, generally speaking, anybody that has gotten any weapon from tier six might not necessarily want this, but for Shadow Priest in particular, it is gonna be better than Maelstrom's Fury. Um, not by a whole lot, but um, it is going to be a nice option for them. So uh, a nice item for a uh, Shadow Priest. Overall, both of these items are going to be quite good if you happen to have bad luck in your guild with weapons. All right, on to the items that are uh, a step down. Um, the feral items, there's a pair of legs and a chest. They're both decent if you don't have tier six. Um, there's a regen ring, decent if you have bad rings, I guess, but pretty much just worse than the ring from Reputation, the exalted ring. Uh, it also has a lot less intellect for, uh, for your paladin. Uh, but if you if you don't have the bonus from Exalted, if you're still revered, uh, it's actually pretty close to the revered ring. Um, gloves. These are gloves that are pretty similar to an old badge glove. It does have more intellect, though, so it could be a little better for a mage. We've got gauntlets of rapidity. Not Not really super great, but if you happen to have a hunter that doesn't have their tier gloves... A lot of times there's not that many other gloves they would have gotten. A lot of the haste gloves would be prioritized like enhancement shamans. So maybe you've got a hunter that doesn't have tier six glove. Um, but yeah, this is very far behind. We've also got the uh, tunic of the dark hour, very high hit chest. It's gonna be worse than even the nether shadow tunic, which isn't even bis. Uh, midnight chest is better. 
So this is a, a few steps back, but not horrible. Uh, we've got scaled Drake skin tunic. Again, not the best, not an item that's statted particularly great. It is similar to the Grand Stalker chest. The Grand Stalker chest is not very good for a hunter. But again, if you're like a hunter that still doesn't have tier six chest and doesn't have any other chest that's very good, maybe you could use it. Not a great item though. And the thing is with a lot of these items down here, uh, besides the weapons, right? With a lot of these items down here, a lot of them are going to be uh, just a waste of badges in a lot of cases because you, there's going to be something above that is better and is going to last you longer. So for example, if, if you go and buy uh, as a feral the embrace of the everlasting prowess before you buy the staff i think that's just a little bit foolish because you're going to replace the chest uh, as soon as you get a tier six chest as long as you're doing tier six content going for that chest still as soon as you get that you'll be able to replace it whereas the staff is going to last you until uh, the sunwell item drops so uh, that's the main reason a lot of these items are lower ranked here a uh, breastplate of ire again maybe a ret could use this not generally very good. Um, corrupted soul cloth pants, not terrible. If you happen to have a caster that can use a leg piece that doesn't have hit and that does not have uh, a set bonus, it can be okay, but it's just, that's pretty situational and you've got a lot of uses for your badges. All right, we already talked about the weapons being really good. Uh, in the web page, I'll move these up. These, uh, I think these should be classified as slightly uh, worse than tier six bis. Um, but yeah, just keep in mind that uh, I'm going to move these up. These are a little underrated where I have them placed here in my little quick ranking. All right, then we got a bunch of items that are kind of bad. I'll gloss through them pretty quick and explain why they're not as good. But yeah, we've got these gloves. Uh, with Sunwell, eventually you're going to be able to make the BOE gloves once sun motes get cheaper, once more people have the pattern, um, maybe once your guild gets the pattern. Um, but there is a BOE from Sunwell that can be crafted for leatherworking that is just better than this for, for Rest of Druid. They also have gloves that are better than it from uh, Terran Gorfine, the Haste gloves that are very similar to that crafted glove. So yeah, not very good, not very good and not even great even if you don't have those. Uh, daggers again, these daggers both have stamina and hit, which make them unfortunately not the best even as like a hunter stat stick it is too much stamina to be good in raid um, even in pvp a lot of times they might have too much hit to be that good but anyway on to the next uh, we have the barbed gloves of the sage this item is just not really very good compared to tier a lot of these items in this ranking are like worse than tier five so a lot of these items are just individually statted very poorly the girdle of seething rage statted very poorly um, there's a belt that you can get from badges from phase four that has armor pen on it and hit that would be better than this as well. Um, you've got the gown of spiritual wonder, again, worse than like tier five chest for a priest. The shroud of lore and I has a bunch of hit and spirit as a spell damage item. Very bad. Um, the embrace of starlight is a bad boomy item, typically worse than like tier five chest. I think tier five chest even might have hit on it. And I think this was like worse than that, even if you didn't need the hit. So these items are pretty poor. Um, Shroud of Nature's Harmony, again, just falls very far behind. Shot, or, uh, it's just too much main stat and not enough sockets compared to previous tier from like a Resto Druid. Uh, this chest is not, it has a lot of intellect. It like could maybe be, ah, it's just not, it's just not enough healing. Um, you lose so many sockets. Another plate chest, not the best. Even something like tier four. Some of these items are like competitive with tier four um, and generally worse than tier five items. So pretty, pretty poor all around. Another very bad spirit hit item. Uh, again, the reason I say these are bad is because it's cloth and really only a mage would use a cloth item with spirit, but mages don't have trouble with hit. So a lot of these items are just really bad. Um, Leggings of Pursuit, not great. Pretty much anyone who would ever get these should go get Scryer's Retainer instead. Um, so don't go get the Scryer's Retainer. Don't don't buy these. Leggings of Pursuit. We got more Holy Pally Legs again. Not great. Just very low healing overall. Even if you compare it to uh, some of the other healing legs, 
the the healing legs that are good for priest have how how much healing they've got 114 with two sockets and for whatever reason the paladin one only has 97 and i guess it's because the mp5 is supposed to be valuable but yeah just not great and then lastly we've got another dagger that's not the best so that's it let me know what you guys think again uh, i underrated these a little bit just in my ranking um i'll move them up on the the page to reflect a little better but uh yeah these are the items that are coming out with badges uh get farming on your badges let me know what you guys think are there any items you think i underrated um anything i uh, didn't point out let me know but that is it for all of the new badge items coming in with phase five. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.